Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today, we're looking at another family who's fallen victim to the Goodfellows. So not only did these Sims steal a human toddler and replace it with a fairy toddler, whose origin is unknown by the way, like, Hello? Child missing in aisle 5? Child missing in aisle 5 please. <clears throat> whose child is this please? Where did this baby fairy come from anyway? Is it Pips? Who knows? Now, the Goodfellows have done it again and turned someone's child into a fairy. And okay, you might say, well, whatever, it's not as bad as stealing kids and replacing them, right? Well, the family who this happened to hates supernatural beings, so yeah, let's take a look at this mess and see what we can find. Clean up on aisle five, please. There's a, a child uh, with, with wings. Anybody? Don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Back where James Hopcraft was from, people worked hard, respected one another, and didn't turn into howling beasts when the moon was full. And that's the way it should be everywhere. The Hopcrafts are a traditional family that values traditional family values, period. Get out here! Can the Hopcrafts survive in such an outlandish town, or will their values get the best of them? Okay then, why are you here? Delete. The Hopcrafts live at 120 Merchant Way in a four bedroom, four bathroom home called Pleasant Place, whose description reads, this massive multi-level manor house is meant for a king and his entire court. The custom designed roof line with its many peaks and gables add to the impressive facade. Your little prince or princess has their own turret tower from which to rule over their kingdom. Give your royal family the palace they deserve. The home is your typical suburban house, but inside, I find that there's some unanswered mystery. As you come inside, you're greeted by the living area where there's two sofas and two armchairs, some plants, a fireplace, a bookshelf, and some nice painting and pictures. From here, you can go straight into the dining area, and by the credenza here, there's a small bathroom with a shower and a separate room for the toilet. I actually quite like the placement of the shower here, but it's pretty strange nonetheless. Moving on from the dining room is the kitchen, which is relatively small. Nothing too interesting here. From the kitchen, you can also access the backyard where the Hopcrafts have a grill on the porch and an outdoor dining table and benches. From the kitchen, there's also a small room with a desk, a computer, sofa and TV, probably James's home office. It's pretty empty here, so you can add a bit more considering the family starts out with 25,000 simoleons. Going upstairs, through the first door straight ahead, is a home gym with one treadmill, a stereo, a large mirror, and a light blue rug, which seems to mimic a yoga mat. Of course, this isn't usable. From here, your sims can access a balcony where there are two rocking chairs. Next door is a bedroom with an ensuite bathroom. And, um, I don't know what's going on with the bathtub, but ew. <laughs> Please change the texture before playing. Coming out of this room, there's another bigger bedroom next door with a bookshelf, a dresser, and an armchair propped in front of the fireplace. I think it's safe to assume this is the master bedroom. Here, you also have an ensuite bathroom with the same nasty bath texture. Please, who came up with this and why? <laughs> Moving on is the room next door, which is the baby's room. Here we have a crib, a bookshelf, a teddy bear, and an armchair. Coming back to the hallway, there's a very narrow staircase which leads to what looks like the attic. However, when you come in, there's a whole separate dwelling up here. There's a room with a foosball table and a large stereo, a bathroom, and a single bedroom which looks like a teen's bedroom, fully equipped with a dresser, bookshelf, an armchair, a TV with a gaming console, a desk with a computer, and a single bed. Now, this to me is a bit strange. I know that the bio mentions it, but is this space being prepared for when Alfred grows up? Did they prepare this before they learned he was a fairy? Do they even know he's a fairy? Are they planning on having more kids? Did they have another kid? Was it a teen boy? Maybe if we take a closer look at each individual member, we can figure out what they're up to. First up is James. A man of science, James does not agree with the supernatural. All this magic and mystical nonsense, it's just not healthy. 
He once tried to cast a magic spell as a child and his mother gave him a stern talking to and sent him right to law school. It was the best thing that ever happened to James and he was only eight. Even though he gave up law after passing the bar at age 12, James was always grateful for the discipline and structure that his school provided. Now he just hopes to bring that structure into everyone's lives. Yikes, that doesn't sound healthy at all. So from what we know, James's mom sent him away after he tried to cast a spell. We can assume he didn't always detest magic and the supernatural and that it was imposed on him by his mother. It's also safe to assume he developed his hatred over time and now accepts it as part of his life. You know, sometimes it's best to question your upbringing and do what's right for you. So James is an adult who has the Taurus star sign and is a perfectionist, neat, a coward, a heavy sleeper and a supernatural skeptic. Because his supernatural skeptic is the last trait, this makes me assume it's the last one he developed. The coward trait was probably developed as his mother was intimidating and bullying him. His favorites are electronica music, waffles and the color red. James works as a top secret researcher in the science career where he's doing incredibly well and in my game, James graduated from Dribbledine Sports Academy. James has quite the impressive skills panel where he has 7 skill points in logic, 3 skill points in fishing, 6 in gardening and 5 in handiness. Again, probably something his parents pushed onto him or heavily encouraged which was for him to succeed at everything. James's lifetime wish is to become a creature robot crossbreeder and in his inventory we can find the usual but also a book titled Philip's Monuments. He seems to know quite a lot of people around town and I'm not going to go through each one, however, something stood out to me. It's interesting that even though he's a supernatural skeptic, he's good friends with Pip Goodfellow, friends with his own son Alfred and Sophie Rogers who we looked at in the last video. Now this makes absolutely no sense. I mean, make it make sense. <laughs> Did he befriend Pip before starting his hatred for supernaturals? Does he even know Pip is a fairy? Maybe that's it. Maybe he doesn't know Pip is a fairy, started bitching to Pip about hating supernaturals, so then Pip took revenge and turned his son into a fairy. I mean, that's super petty, but that's kind of old news as we're learning both Pip and his senile mother are incredibly petty and a bit loopy. I mean, a lot loopy. <laughs> Let's have a look at James's wife, maybe there's some normality here. Miriam hails from a smaller town of 15 sims where everyone knew each other's names and everything about their personal lives. To her, Moonlight Falls is a bustling city and it's easy for her to feel lost in the crowd. Miriam expects everything to be in its place, is resistant to change and certainly cannot understand the life of a supernatural. She knew something was up the moment she moved to Moonlight Falls and hopes that by running for office she can shed some truth onto the town. She will lead by example, her family a shining beacon of normalcy in the murky skies above Moonlight Falls. Everything will turn out perfectly. Okay, no normality here unfortunately. Miriam is in her mid-young adult years and she has the Aries star sign. Of course she does, speaking from experience, I too am resistant to change. She is over-emotional, a light sleeper, evil, a snob, and a supernatural skeptic. I guess James really found the one. Her favorites are kids' music, cookies, and the color black. Miriam works as a local representative in the political career where she's doing really well and in my game she graduated from community high school. She has six skill points in logic and five in charisma. Her lifetime wish is to become the leader of the free world and in her inventory she has the usual but also a book titled The Dragon Ripple. Just like her husband James, Miriam has quite a big relationships panel. Again, interestingly, she's friends with her son Alfred, Sophie the toddler fairy and distant friends with Pip Goodfellow. Maybe she started to catch on. Maybe things will go downhill from here. Even in her bio, the last sentence is kind of almost sarcastic. Everything will turn out perfectly, which I don't believe at all. So let's just stop for a second and take a look at something. Because both Alfred's parents are supernatural skeptics, they will dismiss anything magical as nonsense and rubbish. When fairies interact with a playful pester, they will get a fly swatter and swat them away. This decreases the relationship they might have. They mainly will be super against supernaturals, expressing their disgust, phobia and more. 
So y'all better save little Alfred. Let's take a look at him. Alfred is a very charismatic and well-behaved little guy who Miriam and James believe is the envy of all the other parents on the block. He was much like other toddlers until he had a fateful encounter with the elder fairy Flora Goodfellow who was practicing some new spells. Flora intended to cast a spell on herself, but it backfired and turned Alfred, who happened to be nearby, into a fairy. Too afraid to say anything, Flora kept it to herself, but secretly watches from afar to see how the Hopcrafts will take to their son's glistening wings once he grows up. Um, so basically it's confirmed here that Flora made a mistake. This wasn't a prank, but just a mistake? Surely she could fix it? I mean... And I love the way it says she's watching from afar to see how they get on. Girl, you know these people hate fairies. Wow, I mean, I have no words. <laughs> Alfred is a toddler and is clumsy and artistic. His favorites are electronica music, cookies, and the color aqua. He is friends with both his parents, which probably won't last long, and is also friends with Pip Goodfellow. I reckon Flora is just telling Pip to keep in touch with them and then watch over them to see how they get on. Wow, okay, so that was a twist of events. <laughs> Flora and Pip meant no harm, but are soon to learn the Hopcrafts are not too keen on supernaturals. I mean, look, okay, we knew this from her bio when it says, though Flora has some guilt in accidentally turning the Hopcraft toddler into a fairy, she looks forward to watching from afar to see how the events unfold. She's being fairly cheeky here, as she feels guilty, but is also like, you know what, I'm gonna wait around for a bit and see how this plays out rather than just changing him back. I don't know, that to me is kind of evil, not to mention her other prank. Also, going back to their weird attic room thing, I think maybe this was James's childhood home. He felt alienated as a teen, so he took comfort in building himself his own space in the attic to get away from his parents. That's one of my theories anyway. Let me know your guys' theories on how you play with this family. Do you save Alfred? Do you move him onto another family? Do you give him to Linda Rogers so she can create her fairy army without even knowing? <laughs> Personally, I make a fairy family and take Alfred to them. The way I see it is this new fairy family is new to town and they've been trying to conceive. The reason why I do this is because if I leave Alfred with the Hopcrafts, history will end up repeating itself. Just like a young James was neglected and unloved, Miriam and James will end up feeling the same about Alfred just because he's a fairy. On a light note, I make a new family for Alfred. If you're interested, their bio reads, Pixie and Puff are new to Moonlight Falls. When their careers just weren't enough to fill the void and loneliness, they moved here to look for a sense of community and build a family. Word around town about the Hopcrafts spread like wildfire, especially within the fairy community. So Pixie is adamant to save little Alfred, possibly by offering the Hopcrafts a deal they can't refuse. Hand over Alfred and live fairy free forever. All right guys, there you have it. Lots of info on the Hopcrafts. Let me know how you deal with these two in the comments below. Do you let them roam around hating on everyone? Or do you relate to them for hating supernaturals? I'd love to know. I'd like to thank my patrons Negative Dana, Papa Khan, Leo Thompson, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, Caitlin Luigi, A Wild Kitty Cat, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Carolyn, Andreas, Whitney, Hannah S, Amy Louise, Charlie, Libby Young, Perlog Anwil, Brigitte Gill, Shelby Hill, Nicole Dante, Nicola Morton, Moth Detective, and Kevy Smith Joyner. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.